This is a vehicle that I've always wanted ever since I was a young lad. I mean, growing up watching all those American war films like Warlord and Black Hawk Down, this, you always see it as one of the most iconic American vehicles of the modern age. And finally, after all this time, we've got one. And I'm not alone. We're actually with my mate Gidge just here and we're going to be taking it for a bit of a drive so looking on the outside here as you can obviously tell it's not an armored vehicle it only weighs about two and a half ton it's what we call a soft skin vehicle now if you come a bit closer and you look at the uh the metal work it's only about what probably two maybe three mil uh, thick it's really not thick at all but it does mean it's the perfect weight to be getting chucked out of planes if you see these little hooks just here you got one here one there and there's two more in the back the idea is that you'd actually be able to connect a parachute onto this so you could push it out the helicopter or not helicopter out the plane chucks out the helicopter would be a very big <laughs> helicopter but you could chuck it out the plane and it would obviously parachute down to where it was needed and this is where the other hooks are one's here and one's on the other side um, now usually there would be a back onto this but we haven't paid the extra and bought it but it is what it is but if you have a look just back here obviously you've got spare wheel and then the antenna well this is only half the antenna the other half is if I can actually see, I'm not going to climb up there, but you can tell it would be a very tall antenna. But obviously, since this one would have a radio in the front and between the driver and the passenger seat, I presume the antenna would be for that. As you can imagine, there's not a huge amount to show you on the outside of it, especially because it's obviously just the very basic version. But Gidge is now going to show you underneath the hood and show you guys the engine. Yeah, yeah. i go up a bit more, I think. Does it? Is it right? Yeah, it's got to go up a little more. It's it's can't because of the front. It's on the front, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's catching on the, uh, on the yeah. Front grill. Yeah. It's it's catching, it? So what, we just got to hold it? Does the front grill move? It does. Ah, so what, the front grill goes down and then... And then we're into the engine. Ah. Makes sense. Well, you can have a barbecue on that. <laughs> Can do later. <laughs> hey, we've just had lunch. <laughs> That's it, locked. Okay, so here we are underneath the bonnet. Uh, as you can see, a hell of a lump in there. She's a 6.2 naturally aspirated V8 diesel. Uh, naturally aspirated meaning we've got no turbo on there. So she's just to the atmosphere there. Uh, a few bits are quite recognisable with alternator charging there, uh, fan, fan belts injection pump down the back in between the manifolds down here inlet manifold down there um, one bank down here so we've got four injectors down the bottom there we'll have another four down here on the sub bank and yeah a hell of a hell of a lump in there and then the radiator as well got the radiators up on the front here you can see how the radiator is actually slanted as well which will give a maximum airflow straight in there it's quite kind of unique and obviously as you can see the uh Heat exchanger there has had a few uh, <laughs> a few rough days to say the least. Oh, I've got my foot stuck. <laughs> We're out. But you have to pull it. No, so down. What is it? It's fiberglass, isn't it? It looks like it. Yeah. Or is the body steel and then the last fiberglass? Yeah. Or is it? No, it's yes, yeah, so the body steel, but the bonnet. Yeah, really or is it just fiberglass underneath? I think it's just fiberglass. Mm -hmm. There we go, right. There she comes. Yeah, she's got the lock. So just while Gidge is locking down the bonnet, what we're going to do now is we're going to hop into the vehicle, uh, get it started, show you guys how it all works, and then take it for a bit of a drive. So let's have a look inside. So here we are in the uh, in the drivers. As you can see, there's a uh, very spacious, quite a lot of room in here. With, uh, obviously, you've got your standard steering wheel. You've got a manual, uh, sorry, manual automatic gearbox. So you got that there. A luxury vehicle such as this even has a heater. You know, keep you warm in the cold weather. Um, as you can see. It's ducted right down to the passenger and the driver. I don't know if that's um, meant to be like that. I think that I think probably is meant to be fitted. I think that's just to blow the cold air down onto your feet. Which you probably would have tucked into something there which vented down. Yeah, straight down into there, look. Oh, right. I and thought it would have be... just vented down. So, yeah, basically, you've got your blower motor and your, your hot air. It's getting passed from the engine straight into there. Blower motor pushes against it. Hot air travels through, out through the little vents to do the screen. 
do your face, do your feet. All the luxury, all the mod cons. And the doors, look at the doors. This is what's literally just a, a fabric sheet with a little plastic catch just to hold that door closed. Doesn't give you much protection, I guess, but uh, it keeps the wind off you. So we're going to take it for a bit of a drive now. So we've got the key down here, which I'll turn, which acts as an isolator. Uh, just here, we've got the starter, indicator, steering wheel, and the horn that works. Uh, just down here to your right, you've got your handbrake and then the uh, the gear selector, well, the automatic gear selector, so you can put it into reverse, put it into drive, all of that stuff. And obviously down here to your right, all your dials telling you how fast you're going, everything like that. But there is one very big thing to remember when starting at one of these. So just here, there was a little orange light. So you'll see, as I click to turn it on, you see that light comes on. Now you cannot start it until that light goes off. If you do, apparently absolutely knackers the engine. I don't know how, uh, but apparently it does. So I'm not going to find out. But there, now the light's gone off. We can now hopefully start her up. There we go. Now at this point, Stuart came out of the office and he said because the Humvee is actually road registered and we haven't taken it out on the road yet, he said we could take it down to the next village and go get some lunch. And the best bit was he was paying. Did it splash the phone? Yeah. Yeah, so I had it stood up, then the, the splash of the tunnels were that good, it, um, it knocked it over. <laughs> but it got some good footage. Yeah, that's a great thing. Sorry about that, I didn't do it on purpose at all, I promise. Cool. It's a bit bumpy. <laughs> so I think we need to concrete the track. Well, can I call in the house just for two minutes anyway? So. No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, mate. Well, the sun's out now. Sun's out. Sun's out now. Look, get your windows open. I, 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 I get, get your windows open. Would you, would you want to be on the back of that going down the road? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> How much did you say? It was 15 grand for the roof. Yeah, so if you actually want to get the hard top, unlike this canvas wood, it's 15,000 pounds like, yeah. Now the vehicle has actually been MOT'd when we bought it off the guy. Um, he had it MOT'd, I think he's got about 11 and a half months left now. So like I say, if you take it for a bit of a drive, have a bit of fun. Um, I think, what, did, what was it we said? Was it 19... 80, 80, 1983 is tax exempt and 1984 will be MOT exempt. So. Yeah. We're fully so, exempt, but it's always good practice to have the MOT. <laughs> I don't think it is. 86, so it's after. It's after the 84, so it has got to be MOT. Yeah, oh, good point. Yeah, yes. not before, yeah. So this is this has to legally be MOT. So it still has to be MOT for a couple of years. Yeah. Right. Let's see how we get on. <laughs> I've never driven this on the road before, so we'll be fine. Have you ever driven it anywhere? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was planning on doing a little bit of driving around the field in a bit, but here we are. And basically, you've got to keep that wheel right against the kerb. I'll tell you if I'm too far over this way. Yes. You happy yet? Yeah. All clear yet? Like that? Well, that's good. Not too far over, am I? No, you're all right. Keep going that way, though, because I'm in the traffic. Is it a bad time to say as well I've never driven an automatic, either? You're not. Not, not a car. They're easier than anywhere else, anyway. They are, but it just feels weird. It feels like it should be changing gears. Brakes good though, if you'd hope. Do you think people get confused when we drive stuff like this around? Not down here anymore, they're used to this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which way is it then? To North Hill? Straight up Yeah. Oh yeah. right, well here's a big pot of so that'll show you how good the suspension is. <laughs> bit bumpy, how's the suspension? It's, it's not as bad as you think, but it's not as good as you think either. <laughs> Needs more weight, in it? Needs more weight. You need to get your wallet then. <laughs> It'll be different when we've had dinner. <laughs> so, if you look, we're about to go past a, uh, what was it, a, uh, oh, what are they called? Speed camera. Speed camera, that's the word. So, I'm going to slow down because I don't know, but that'd be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be a cool photo. 200 quid fine and a. Like supplied by the council. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Oh, oh no, so here we can park it. Here's uh, Albert's calf. Looks quite busy. Mm. Yeah, we have to go around this other side, Alex. Oh, really? yeah. What about those? Oh, big, big. Oh, yeah, well, 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 Right, all good. Now what we're going to do, head back to site. I'm going to tell you guys a bit of history about this vehicle. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely a bit of okay, time. Okay, okay. All clear? Okay, okay. Alex. Still casting out of it. Alright, we're back. Yeah, she does. She drives really well. No, surprising, I say surprising, I guess it's quite a modern vehicle compared to what we're used to anyway, but yeah. no, she drove really, really lovely. Oh, I've seen it in an hour. Absolutely soaked. <laughs> Look at <laughs> You soaked me. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? That's great fun that is, isn't it? She drives absolutely lovely. <laughs> Perfect. And just like oh, that. Just like that. Not every day we get to drive one of these, but Not every day. it's definitely a good day when we do. Now, after seeing how fun the Humvee is to drive, you're probably wanting to know some more information about it. Well, its actual name is the High Mobility Multi-Purpose Wheeled Vehicle. They've been produced since 1984 with all sorts of different variations that have been made as the years have gone by. In total, over 281,000 have been made. So by the mid-1960s, the American government wanted to update their light vehicle fleet. In wars such as the Vietnam War, the most common light vehicle was still the Jeep. And although it had seen upgrades like the M151 utility truck, it was still very much a Jeep, similar to those used in World War II. So after a load of different designs in the 1970s, finally the Humvee made its way through in the early 80s. The specification at the time called for excellent on and off-road performance, the ability to carry a large payload, and improved survivability against indirect fire. Compared to the Jeep, it was larger and had a much wider track, with a 16-inch ground clearance, double that of most sport utility vehicles. Humvees first saw combat in Operation Just Cause, which was the US invasion of Panama in 1989. The Humvee was designed mainly for personnel and light cargo transport behind the front lines, so not as a frontline fighting vehicle. Like the previous Jeep, the basic Humvee has no armor, exactly like the one I'm sat in just here, and because of that, it has no protection against chemical, biological, or nuclear threats. Of course, this all eventually changed. After Operation Restore Hope in Somalia, the military recognized a need for a more protective Humvee. An AM general developed the M114, an armored Humvee, to withstand small arms fire. With the onset of the Iraq War, Humvees proved to be very vulnerable to IEDs. In the first four months of 2006, 67 US troops died in Humvees. To increase their protection, the US military quickly added armor kits to the vehicles. Although this somewhat improved survivability, bolting on armour made the Humvee a quote ungainly beast, increasing the weight and putting a strain on the body which led to unreliability. Armoured doors that weighed hundreds of pounds were difficult for troops to open and the newly armoured turret made Humvees top heavy and increased the danger of rollovers. The US Marine Corps decided to start replacing Humvees in combat with mine resistant ambush protected vehicles which are the MRAPs in 2007 and the US Army stated that the vehicle was no longer feasible for combat in 2012. Now they are 
still being used all over the world as they were either gifted or sold to loads of countries such as Denmark, Albania, Greece, the list just goes on. But anyway guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. Please comment down below if there's any other video ideas or if there's any other vehicles in our collection that you just want to have a look at and make sure you subscribe. But anyway, thanks again and I'll see you guys in the next video.